it is good, as Austin and I were just talking with Dan, to lay out our walls all at the same time. But you can snap lines and lay out your walls on your flooring because then it's easier when you come to that wall to just then go and start cutting all the wood for that wall. For the inside line on a regular house, when you do the sheathing on the ground and you do a regular house and you don't have a glue lamp above you, you make those chalk lines so that everything stays square and straight. Come on, Cassandra. One, two, three, I do. I didn't understand. Tell them it's like J-E-L-L-O. Yeah, so we got the uprights in, the four by fours on all four ends. We have six of those, two in the middle. We have the glue lambs in, that uh, is our support up top. Um, and then we have one wall in. As of right now, by the end of today, we should have all of our walls in completely all the way around. Yeah, so I like the deadlines, it's great. Uh, it gives us something to shoot for and push to. Um, basically just muscle memory and experience, both with the tools and the materials that we're using. Um, everything is mapped out a little bit better. We understand uh, how to read the blueprints now um, so that we can kind of get in there and do it ourselves more than just it being fed to us little by little. So we're snapping chalk lines all the way around the house. What that does for us is to make sure that the uh, bottom plate uh, of our studs is going to be in a straight line. So when we come in and we finish it, um, both on the outside and the inside, there's no waves to the drywall or the sheeting on the outside. Yeah, I'm going to hold it at the end if you just want to snap it right there in the middle. Okay, ready? Well, you got to go lower. Okay, I'm ready. This is a great experience because we're, we're doing everything to code. It's, it's off of a blueprint. It's from an architect that has, uh, you know, has looked over it and understands the load, the structure, the non-structural walls. And so um, I, I've learned a tremendous amount in framing. I'd say framing and electrical have been the two things that I've really learned the most uh, on as, as far as codes. Um, but this has been a tremendous amount of fun for me, this, this particular area and uh, everybody in the whole class has learned a lot. We're, we're learning how to work together a little bit better as well. For this specific style house that we're building in this tiny home, architecturally we have to have this all thread here. It provides a lot more support for us on the glue lambs. Um, so with the, uh, uh, the framing of it, we have to provide some notching. So we'll notch through here so that we can allow for these two by four bottom plates to come all the way out to the outside. All right. All right, so when we do our layout here, this wall here has a window to it. So we know from this side to that side, we're doing 16 inch centers for the studs, but we know that with three feet in, we, uh, we need to have a window too. So what we do is we come here on the, on, the, on the base here, on the foundation, we make our marks, and then we X on the side where the stud's gonna be. We label what kind of stud it's going to be, whether it's a trimmer, um, or a king stud or a cripple stud. Um, we label all that here and then we transfer it onto our bottom and top plate. And then we can take this off, open it up, and then put our studs in between there so that everything lines up perfectly from the foundation all the way up to the top of the glue limb. This here is for our blueprints. Uh, each one of them, there's a three quarter scale um, three sixteenths and then one quarter. So our blueprints are set to one quarter a foot. So when I come over here to the framing, I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna take a look at my blueprints. I'm gonna lay down my one quarter a foot to the blueprints. I can see the spacing, how many feet between the windows, the doors, um, how everything's laid out. And then I know um, exactly how many feet over here and I can mark it on my actual floor plan. So that's the biggest thing I think where a lot of people um, don't understand when you walk onto a job site you can pull up these blueprints um, as long as you know how to read them and measure them you can transfer that straight to over here um, and then do your layout so we're marking our stud uh, spacing and so what I'm doing is I'm marking the top plate and the bottom plate at the same time then we'll separate it right now it's being held on here by the uh, the nail here that's just keeping them perfectly um, in line with one another and then I transfer what I did from the floor to the bottom and the top plate. And then like here, I'm gonna go ahead and put an X over here. That way I know that my stud is going on this side of that mark. Um, and then this is just a regular stud. If it was, if it was something else, uh, let's see here, like this one here, right? 
there's a stud here. I'm gonna mark an X on this side, and then I'm gonna put a K here because I know that that's a king stud. So a king stud is gonna be on this side of that line. So I'm not, once I get this together, I'm not measuring the bottom and measuring the top. They're already pre-marked out. I just lay them down on the ground, we nail them together, and then we put it in the, the hole here. And the trimmer. That doesn't quite, like, uh, at least from my measurement, when I went an inch and a half over here. How are you doing, Rick? So you can get to the oh, two by four. We get these homes, these tiny homes, and they're sent to us in packages that look just like this. Um, unfortunately, we need the two by four sometimes uh, before we need the sheeting. So we just all come out here, we lend a hand, we put these uh, braces down to make sure that the wood doesn't warp, and then we move it over so that everybody can move on to the two by four framing. And we got to move more than just one pile. <laughs> Positivity, very important here our, um, at the school, very important in all aspects of life, no matter what you're doing. Um, tensions are going to run high no matter what. Sometimes you're going to get frustrated, make mistakes, but as long as everybody's picking each other up, being that teammate that says, hey, you know, that looks good. Hey, good job on your energy and effort today, even if things didn't go well for you. It's very important to success here at school and in the work environment. We're going to take a look at the wood every time that we pick it up. We want to make sure that it's straight. Um, and then we're going to check the crowning before we put it on the wall to make sure that our walls on the inside are as straight as humanly possible. Uh, both top and bottom plates need to be as straight as we can get them as well because the rest of the 2x4s um, will, base, will be based upon those top and bottom plates. So we look down here, we check this way and this way. This one's pretty good. We can take this one and move it over. It's determined not really by the way that it's cut, but how old it is, whether it's been in the sun, what weather has gotten to it, its moisture content. These are all supposed to be dried. You can pick these up and one of them will be, you know, four times as heavy as the other two by four. We want the dry wood and the straight wood. So if you look down this one here, this one bows to the left, right? This one's not the best piece of wood. And the longer that the piece of wood is, the harder it is to keep it straight because the natural grain of the wood will want to make it curve over time. But that's why it's important to keep these things separated and lying flat. You can see how this one kind of boomerangs that way. If we just lay them down and they're every way and not flat like this with spacing so air can get through there, um, they will get warped really, really quickly. And then they become basically unusable for us in the home build. Good craftsman needs need to notice these things. Right, very important. If, if you don't notice these things, you take them all over there, start working on them, you'll be working on it all day long. Whereas if you have good straight wood, um, then it'll, it'll just take an hour or two. We're doing that, the exterior wall, we are using nail guns this time. The first house that we built was all done by just hammer and nail, um, which I'm proud to say that we did, but I never want to do it again. Um, back when I was in construction, when I was younger, everything we were using was pneumatic. Now, now they have these battery operated nail guns, which are really cool because you don't have the lines and the air compressor is currently going off and tripping you up and um, making things a little bit harder on you. So this is very versatile, uh, makes things a lot easier. Um, we're happy to have them for this build. By the end of the day, we're hoping to have all of these walls in and we're hoping to have as much of the sheathing done as we possibly can. So once we get the sheathing up, then we can take these braces off. It stands up structurally really well and then we can start cutting out the windows and the doors and start moving to, um, to some of the interior work. 